That's the sound of me prepping the grill with Reynolds Wrap. And the sound of me not doing dishes. And the sound of me spending more time outside with my family. Easy prep, cook, and clean. Make time with Reynolds Wrap. I like the sound of that. In the last elections, we, we need to check the exact numbers, but it will be, be exactly marginal. Um, yes. Yeah, so. In 2020 election, James Jatsukwesen polled 17,498. It actually dropped oh, a drop. 200 votes. Yes. And then um, Abinadura polled 14,193. So, so massive so, drop of votes. So, he, so he's lost an excess of 2,000 votes. Exactly. And Whereas Jatsukwesen has lost on 200 votes. Exactly. 200 yeah. votes there. So give or take, he's maintaining his votes, whereas... The NDC, um, yeah, he's dropped 200 votes, which is which is really marginal. I mean, it's it's okay if you win. Um, and as you may have to see the voter turnout, voter turnout as well. to also. Yeah, exactly. they, the as of this, after today, the electoral commission was hoping, based on the, the, the what they were seeing at the polling stations, for a high voter turnout, um, and then we can compare to what we saw in the 2020 elections and see what happens. Mm-hmm. But traditionally, if you look at if you look at um, by elections, voter turnout has always been low. Yeah. And the EC estimates that to be historically to be around 50-55%. It's always low compared to national elections. Yeah. But they were hoping that this would, would sort of be a departure from that trend. Um, and, and so that's another interesting thing. So yeah. you expected both parties to lose votes mm-hmm. from the previous elections. Yes. You expected that to happen. But the NDP has done too much. Is that it was significantly more yeah. than what the, what yeah. the NDC has done. So, and, but and Evans, mm-hmm. so at this point, I think it's important we bring in the Kojo uh, Pumpini Asante as well. Um, and, and indeed, yes, you will join us for PM Express, which, by the way, is uh, beginning, beginning just about now. As you know, um, this indeed is, uh, is, is a part where we do the post-election analysis of what we've seen. We're waiting for the Electoral Commission to now give us a formal declaration of the, of the results now, as we've seen at the Coalition Center, which has been projected. It's what they've done. They've finished counting now on 99 Polling stations are in. We're going to take a quick break now. And when we return, I'll be seated with wasting. And then there's a bit more analysis that we need to do for you. Um, that would sort of now begin to help us appreciate the result. I want to pull in the proper context and have a, 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 a whole 360 understanding of the results that we've been telling you. Uh, and try and, you know, go back into history and, and also go into uh, the 2024 elections, because there's, a, there's some very important point, Winston, that we still need to discuss. Mm. What this means for the 2024 elections, and that's something we'll be doing. We'll be talking to the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers. You'll be joined by, shortly, Kojo Asante with the CDD. They've sent a team there. They've been uh, uh, monitoring that for us, and uh, they'll be joining us uh, pretty shortly mm. for a conversation, and also bring in a bit more of the reactions Coming in, could you? Well, uh, grateful to you. But just before we go, uh, Evans, just behind you, you'll see uh, what we've done. James Jache Quason, MP elect for Asa North constituency. So that's uh, um, what it is. He won by 17,245 uh, votes. That's representing 57.56% uh, to uh, Charles Opoku, uh, who garnered 12,630, representing. 42.15 percent well it's been an interesting day uh, with you here on the election headquarters uh, we're not done yet uh, we'll just take a break for evans main sign winston and one uh, to continue with pm express stay with us because there's more analysis to come your way here on your election headquarters You will enjoy free life insurance, oh. free debit card, save while you spend, and an amazing chance to double your salary. A whole dear seven, oh. and even more consolation rewards in the EcoBank Double Salary Promo Reloaded. We will. Guy, this EcoBank Salary Account sounds interesting. Oh. What do you think? Uh, uh, yeah. But maybe next time, Charlie. You know what? I'll go shine my shoe. Hey. Yo, Miss I'll go check my BP. 
trouble We going up, never go down And we stay flat Open an Ecobank salary account today for a lifetime of benefits. You also stand a chance to win more than double your salary in the Ecobank Double Salary Promo Reloaded from now till July 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Under the supervision of the National Lottery Authority under the Caritas Lottery Platform. your luxury. What if you could enjoy ultra luxury in the environs of Sakumono? What if you could have a share of affluence all to yourself? Step into our five-bedroom executive Ohima suite or our four-bedroom oyster asantua space or our four-bedroom plush kukwa unit and discover a whole world of possibilities. It's not just a building, it's a promise of a dream come true. Cherry Tree Properties. We develop spaces as though we were going to occupy them ourselves. Reach us on 0553-662-366 or 0544 Can he tee up someone in red? And he goes to the Do not What's that? You're going for. I'll be the real good. Who is the good? Ghana Jollof or Nigerian Jollof? Ghana Jollof has no co-equal. The smell alone. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, that shit. You two they lie, eh? Now they say to you when they use Google Lens and then they go put them for top. Hey! You are lying. Ghana Jollof. Are you with you? Forget everybody. Yeah, my guy. Put some respect on the goat. On the goat. The only goat I know lives in Tama. Every year, we will give to you back. back, 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 back. We are talking about P.E.T. I want some yard yard to face. Except be the goat, huh? My guy, him be the goat. Our choice of goats may differ in football, music, and jollof. Alumu Betis always brings us together. Alumu, experience greatness in every moment. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18. No recommended to pregnant women. This advert is FDA approved. Daddy? Daddy? Oh, this tank is big! Yes, that's true. It can store a lot of water. That's so true. Wow. It has a working surface on it. Mm-hmm. That's so true. I can see S-I-N-T-E-S syntax. That is so true, my daughter. When it falls down, it will spoil you. That's not true. But why? Whoa. Hey! <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? My name is Tina. I am a person living with HIV. I got to know my HIV status after I gave birth and lost the child because of HIV. In those days, prevention of mother-to-child transmission services had low patronage due to fear and stigmatization. Today, many HIV-positive women have delivered negative children. I follow the guidelines and take my HIV medicine called ARVs every day as prescribed by my doctor. This makes me strong and healthy and also prevents me from passing HIV on to any future child. Please, avail yourself of PMTCT services when pregnant. It is the only way to ensure you do not pass the HIV on to your baby during birth or pregnancy. If you have tested for HIV recently and it was negative, test again when pregnant. If you have tested positive, go to the hospital after birth as directed by your healthcare provider. Your baby will be given medicine immediately and tested to ensure baby and mother are well. Let us work together to have an HIV free generation. Our children must be free to shine.
Answer me now, Unumi. Whiskey. Wash. All of a sudden, your voice are different. And when you try a call. Uh, Bama, bring me the honey whiskey. You know the one? Black Rock Whiskey. Honey whiskey. Shale, honey near their frow. Black Rock Whiskey is strong. Now to taste me is smooth. And it goes down easy. Uh, excuse me. Mm. <coughs> Bama. <laughs> Bama, bring my friend one Black Rock Whiskey. Black Rock Whiskey, blended with natural honey flavor. Hey, what's up? Bama. Black Rock Whiskey can be a feeling smooth national. Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18 years of age and not recommended for pregnant women. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Daddy? Daddy? This tank is big! Yes, that's true. It can store a lot of water. That's so true. Wow. It has a working surface on it. Mm-hmm. That's so true. I can see S I N T E S syntax. That is so true, my daughter. When it falls down, it will spoil. That's not true. But why? Oh. Hey. <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Are you dreaming of a place to call home? A space that embraces your lifestyle, reflects your taste, and brings you joy? Look no further, because the Joy News Habitat Fair is here. Join us for an extraordinary event that celebrates affordability, comfort, and luxury in the housing and construction industry in Ghana. This year, the Joy News Habitat Fair is bringing together the leading players in the housing and construction industry all under one roof. With a wide range of exhibitors including developers, architects, interior designers and financiers, the Echo Bank Joy News Habitat Fair has everything you need to turn your vision into a reality. Be part of the 14th edition of the Echo Bank Joy News Habitat Fair, powered by the Plan City Extension Project from Cities and Habitats. For further inquiries, please call 
Thanks for staying with us. Our continued coverage of the by-elections in Asen North. And just before we went for that small break, we brought to you the latest from the Collation Centre in Asen Breku, where out of the 99 uh, polling stations in and counted and sorted by the Electoral Commission, uh, James Atukwesen was ahead with 57%. Of a vote. We're going to go through that for you because that is the very latest result coming in uh, from the Asin North uh, constituency on the back of the by election uh, today. Uh, in studio with me is, is Winston uh, as we've been analyzing the results as it's coming over the last uh, few hours. In fact, in the last uh, few uh, minutes is when we've seen the Electoral Commission's uh, uh, tally. Also coming. We'll go live to the constituency pretty shortly, but I just wanted to indicate uh, uh, that we are delighted that uh, Cherry Tree Properties, uh, we develop spaces as though uh, we were going to occupy them ourselves, and they are proud sponsors of PM Express. Also, Syntex Tanks. It is strong, it is tough. Alomo Bitters experience greatness in every moment, and Ghana AIDS Commission. And if you really looking for building that is done with passion, it is Cherry Tree Properties that I recommend to you. Desires are wishes. Beauty is a promise of happiness, but passion is everything. Think about buying a new home. Talk to those who build with passion. Sloan Square, if you've not seen it, just Google it. I'll tell you where to find them. Sloan Square is a new gated community development at Sakumono, uh, developed by Cherry Tree Properties one of a kind well-planned luxury you've never experienced before you can reach them on 055 Cherry Tree properties sophistication and class only also uh, as i've told you syntax is proud to be associated uh, with with pm express uh, tonight and uh, no matter your water needs a Syntex tank has it all. Syntex tank is first to introduce double layer tank. And now you can also have as many layers as you want. Syntex tank is first to introduce white inner layer tanks in Ghana as well. Uh, we now introduce you to the customer uh, specs order, which lets you order any color and size of your preference. Indeed, that's a tank that is bespoke. Um, Syntex tank gives you the longest warranty of seven years, which no other tank gives you in Ghana. So whatever your water consumption, size of project or demand, choose Syntex Tank. We have agents nationwide, and you can call us, Syntex, on 0244-335-168, 0244-335-168, or shop online at SyntexGH.com, SyntexGH.com, Syntex Tank. A year strong, a year tough, and indeed, it's been a tough one. Um, yes, for the for the MPP tonight. It has been, Evans. Um, you know, prior to the elections, you had, um, you know, the. Uh, Forgive me when I have to go to the phone and go to. Sure. Uh, Asin North right now. I want to bring in right now, uh, Doctor Kojo Asante with the CDD, okay, with the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, who joins us. Uh, from us in North right now. Thank you very much, Dr. Santa, for your time here on PM Express. And I know your team, you've been doing a lot of work today. Give me a sense of what you've observed throughout the day. Uh, good evening, Ivan, sir. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Wow. All right, good. Yes, it's been a very long day. Uh, uh, but I think, generally, uh, the, the, the setup process, the voting process, all went very well um, in a lot of places. I think by 2 p.m., most of the voters had uh, passed their vote. There were still a few trickling in after that time because it was market day in uh, a few places. Uh, but overall, it was a very, very successful voting period. Um, there were very minor. Um, Problems at the police station. Most of the time, when they happen, uh, the society officers handled it quite well. I think the, the police also deployed uh, massively across the constituency. And 
locally took approach, an approach of just trying to de-escalate any tensions or misunderstandings. That helped uh, in, in most of the cases. And then there was, of course, that single incident of uh, uh, a gun shot in uh, Prato, one of the police stations in Prato, which I believe the police are following up. And apart from that, everything else has been, has been very smooth. And uh, I think we've come to a successful conclusion. The declaration process is underway, and so that will be done very shortly. Yes, and we're waiting for that declaration. Um, and, and today, one of the key things I know you were interested in is also monitoring the, all these allegations of vote buying uh, that we, all, we always see with our elections. What is your assessment of that today? I'm to see that, to say uh, that this particular election hasn't been too heavy on challenges with vote buying, or are you seeing again a repetition of the same old troubles? It's just challenging. I think so there was a lot of allegations of, of vote buying and inducement of all kinds. Uh, when you went around, you would see small groups gathering in somebody's house. Or, and then when you try to inquire, they will tell you that there uh, might be an exchange of things, uh, exchange of uh, gifts or whatever inducement going on in there. It was very difficult for us to observe those kinds of engagements. But you could test it all around. I think the key issue is that if we're going to tackle this, then we need to think differently about how we uncover that type of practice. There is a buyer and there's a seller of votes. And so we are able to really make an example of some of these people. It will be very difficult to make this in the back. And just by looking, I mean, the violent things always go in uh, national figures, there's a lot of money that's coming from the national level. So maybe there's a lot to really go around. But it increases the, the cost of elections. And it means that whoever comes out as a winner uh, probably goes into governance process uh, highly indebted. And that person will find ways to cook it. And that increases the risk of corruption. So I really think that we have to find uh, an antidote, and one part of it is really making it uh, um, a very unpleasant uh, business to get into, and that means the security agencies, particularly the special prosecutor, must get involved, uh, whether it's through undercover, it's through undercover agents and so on. Mm. And, and give me your verdict on security. I mean, that was a key thing going into Ascend North. We know the history of by-elections in Ghana is replete with a lot of violence, and many were afraid that Ascend North, because of what we anticipated will be a very keenly contested election, and it has proven so, uh, may also be uh, suffer uh, the same faith. We saw the police uh, you know, statement today that talks about pockets of violence. What's your own assessment of that on the ground today as, as election observers? Well, I think, as I said, there was that, there was a, that single incident at a parcel where a was a gunshot, somebody was injured, and he was taken to the hospital. Um, apart from that, we didn't hear anything that because we've been at the political center, we don't know what has happened in terms of the uh, post election uh, process or. Uh, any incidents uh, that have happened whilst you were uh, uh, here indoors. Uh, we will we'll find out a bit more. I mean, there was a lot of jubilation, you know, after some of the polling station results were announced. And then, of course, there were a lot of people who were also drunk. <laughs> a lot of uh, people intoxicated. That, that is not a good mix. So I'm just hoping that the police, with all their numbers and their strength, we were able to really keep things under control until we get to the morning. <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. You did, and thank you very much indeed. And, and give me your final verdict then. This election that just went down, 
uh, that just concluded. Was it free, fair, happy with the entire conduct of the elections? Would you put your approval on it at the end of the day? I think the integrity of the process has to be commended. Um, I think there are issues that uh, certainly could be follow up with. We are certainly very worried about uh, uh, particularly some of the local media uh, and the adherence to the no campaigning uh, you know, uh, procedures that we have for general elections. Even the day before, uh, a lot of that was weak. And we didn't look at it. So, some of those things we have to look at carefully to the 2024 elections. Thank you very much. And that is uh, uh, the uh, Dr. Kojo Asante there from Asin North. And we're going to Asin North very quickly, but that's an important point. Uh, earlier in the day, we were reporting a lot about allegations of vote by something that he's talked about. Maybe some work needs to be done about this. As far as violence is concerned, today we've seen uh, and heard stories of gun shows the police have talked about. People have been arrested. They're investigating a bit of this. He's talking about pockets of violence. That is also in, in, has been in the, in the backdrop as we covered this today. You know, we had indicated earlier that this was going to be... Um, I mean, a keenly contested election, well, the results do not show that. But, of course, a lot was at stake in this election. And you saw that, uh, you know, both parties, the NPP wanting to win, it enhances their numbers in Parliament. The NDC wanting to prove the point that uh, you cannot use uh, the court system to deny a people their true representative in Parliament, something they have achieved. And so everybody was in there. Yeah, you saw Parliament empty. And prior to the election, you had the IJP directing that, you know, all bodyguards of police should uh, surrender their weapons just to ensure that, mm. you know, when uh, there are some challenges here and there, you don't have any of them uh, firing. And so it was to be expected. I'm happy that um, we haven't had uh, any case of, uh, you know, injuries or death. We're told uh, we're finding out what may have happened. We're told that um, uh, persons were not injured, as we have been told earlier. So that's okay. Um, but, of course, in an election of this nature, by elections, the evidence would always tell you are always, always problematic sometimes because of the uh, you know, tensions that arise as a result of them. We'll be analyzing the results, and that's why we're doing this is the post-election. But we're waiting for the formal declaration by the Electoral Commission. But as it stands tonight, James Jachi Kwasing, who is the uh, parliamentary candidate for the NDC in Nassim North, um, is expected to be declared the winner of this particular elections. Uh, we're tipping him as the, uh, the elect, the parliamentary candidate, uh, the MP elect for that particular constituency with 57.56% of the votes uh, as opposed to the NPP's uh, Charles Opoku, who we, we anticipate uh, secured the 42.15% of the votes in Asin North, and this is according to the Electoral Commission's own coalition that has been uh, projected there at the coalition centre. Let me take you to Asin North right now. I want to bring in my colleague, Kojo Nyako, who is there for us at the coalition centre. Kojo, um, update us on when we can expect the Electoral Commission to declare the results. shortly because on the uh, collation screen we could see that they've collated all the 99 polling stations so they've written on it 99 are out of 99 polling station and they have the results there but they are yet to do to do their final declaration and their official declaration of the results um we have the big wigs of the MPP here, George Achukwesen himself, is at the collation ground, uh, sandwiched by Fifi Fiavekwete, the General Secretary, Sami Jemfi, and other uh, big guns of the party. But I have with me Adekoka. Adekoka is a very familiar name as far as the NDC is concerned. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sure that you are pretty, pretty excited with the news that the NDC has gotten the seat. Yes, that, 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 that is very much so. And this election is a, a referendum. It's, it's a referendum between the, the people of Ghana and MPP. And uh, I'm excited because the people of Asin have really spoken what the people of Ghana have been saying all the time. And that is 
that this government in the past seven years has failed the people of, of, of this country. Here we are where inflation is about 42 percent. During our time, inflation was 15.5 percent. And they, they, they went, they went, they, they went on, a, on a spree of saying that we have failed as a, as a government. We have failed as a government. Now, here we are, where our pensioners who have worked for so many years are now having to pick it just to get the little money that is due them. Our factories have, have, have been shut down. Our, our currency is, has become a junk currency. You know, with all these things, you know, the people of Asin has, has spoken the language that the people of Ghana want to hear. And the results are very clear. Look, NDC had 58% and MPP 42%. Such a landslide is, 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 is a message to the government that either they sit up and talk to the people of Ghana. They need to talk to us. Ghana belongs to all of us. The idea that only a few people can run this country has now been really made, laid, laid, laid clear that they cannot. So I'm excited. I'm excited not for NDC, but I'm excited for the people of Ghana. But this one was very swift. With just a few of the polling centers announced we, we heard shouts of jubilation. How did you do it? Yeah, because we campaign. I mean, we, we, we have been in this constituency for the past uh, one month, two months, right? And we engaged the people. So we knew how the people were going to vote. We knew. So uh, when we got about 20 police stations, we knew we had won, right? So, I mean, uh, what, 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 the important thing is that the people have spoken. What kind of technology did you adopt and strategy did you adopt? Because uh, this is, uh, some would say, unusual of the NDC for you to collate uh, election results very fast like that. It's a fallacy. We always are able to collate our results. But this time I wanted to prove to the people of Ghana that within one hour, within two hours, we can get our results. And you saw it. Within, within two hours, we've got our... It's taking the EC so many hours to get the result. But within two hours... It shows you that NDC, we are capable, and we are doing it, but unfortunately, the system was stuck against us. Now, we are going to 2024, and we, have, we know what to do now. We are not going to come, to come public and say, this is how we are going to do it. But you yourself, you saw that within two hours, you have been able to collate our results. Well, should, should we be looking forward to 2024, where you will be doing things as fast as uh, how you have done it in Arsenal? Yes, we have done. We, we did it during our presidential elections, and we've done it. So by 2024, we are going to make sure that the loopholes where there are problems, we will have to. I'm sure the system has a little bit of a, a, a niche here and there, but we will have to look at it. But I'm, I'm positive that this time around, 2024, before midnight, we will have our resource in the country. Does this victory of the NDC um, does it have a bearing? on the 2024 elections? Is it a statement that you are going to make? It has, it, 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 this election is very, very important. A journey of a thousand miles, you start with but one step. And this election was very, very important. One, for the government to understand that their time in office is running out. The people of Ghana have spoken. We don't want to ask you, what can they do? If they have seven years and they've not been, do, they've not been able to, to do anything, that has led to this, the, the, this, this defeat. I don't know what they are going to do in one hour. But that doesn't mean NDC, we are going to sleep on our house. We have to work very hard. And I, I, I entreat every NDC person to start from tomorrow. Start the journey. The journey means that we must close our ranks. We must work hard. We must give everybody the due respect that he deserves in the party. We must bring everybody on board to, because the agenda cannot be prosecuted by one person alone. We are all going to do it together. So this election is a prelude to what is going to happen in 2020. That's your reading of um, the happenings now. Does it point to the fact that the people had some sympathy for George Achikwesin or it was a referendum on how the economy is being run. It's a referendum. Apart from having some sympathy towards uh, Kwesin, it was also a referendum, I've told you. It's, it is a referendum. 
I mean, if the government was doing well, the margin would not be so huge. I mean, this is the government. The government has been really humiliated by this resource. Look at the amount of the whole of uh, MPP uh, hierarchy. The president was here on on, on Sunday. Uh, 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 they, they started doing some projects. My president was here. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. All of yeah. So it's a, it, it shows you that it was a, a serious election. It was a battle of your life? Not a battle of our lives, but a battle to prove something that money cannot buy human beings. Money cannot buy the conscience of human beings. You understand? So it was a battle of conscience, a battle to make sure that the people of Ghana are told what is happening. It was a battle of, let me put it this way, a battle to ensure that NDC comes back in 2024. Now there is there, are, there appears to be a cloud of uncertainty hovering around um, George Achikwesen, the criminal trial, and we are told that on Thursday he will be going to court. As an elder of the NDC, what do you make of these developments? Does it suggest that this victory is, is, means nothing? No, the people of Asin has spoken that they, they prefer this equation to continue being an MP for them. I think we've got to a certain stage that the elders of, of this country should get up and advise the government that this matter should be withdrawn from the court for us to move on. We are calling for the withdrawal of the case. It must be withdrawn from the court and we must move on. The verdict of the people is very clear. We want this country to be on a peaceful note rather than on, on, in, in, in turmoil. We have passed that stage. The matter is finished. The election has been held. The man has won, won overwhelmingly. There's no need for us to continue in the court issue. You feel that Mr. George Achikwesi will be overly flogged if they continue uh, the case that is no, carried? No, you not. No, just, I, I don't want to be prejudicial. Well, they are using a, a, a bulldozer to kill a church of life. The matter must end. The matter must end because the people of Asin have spoken. And they, they, they spoke overwhelmingly there's no need for us to continue subjecting this country to unnecessary tension all right, unnecessary all tension. right. mr adukika very very uh, thank you very much uh, we would uh, push closer to get the general secretary of the ndc to speak with fifi created here all at the coalition center and possibly speak with uh, georgia chikwesin who um the i mean the, the figures point to the fact that he is one. So um, let's get to um, Mr. Fifi Kwete and then pick a word from him. Um, uh, thank you very much. Welcome to PM Express. Thank you very much. Uh, what the as a political party, you fought so hard. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, for us, uh, it actually goes beyond the NDC as a party. It goes beyond the same. It's a victory not just for candidate Jechi Kwesen. It's a victory. It's a victory for truth. It's a victory for justice. Uh, and also it's a victory that signals that the people of Ghana are not prepared to sell their soul. That you cannot destroy a nation politically, morally, uh, pervert the systems, the, 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 the institutions and come and think that you can buy the soul of the people by throwing what you call last minute goodies at them trying to deceive them and so on so it's a number of great victories beyond just as enough i'm going to engage you further but let me pick a word from um um honorable george Achikwesen. good evening welcome to pms i thought i just spoke to your counterparts uh, no uh, this is joy news um pm express live on tv uh, good evening good evening should be a uh, happy now by now happy man by now I've always been happy. Tonight is exceptional because I seen our people have vindicated every court and myself. And they still believe in me, so that makes me happy. What does this victory mean to you personally? The Are there lessons to be shared to the whole world? 
Well, I mean, uh, principles and values I work with. And I don't quit easily. So long as I know the course I'm leading is genuine and is benefits other people. You see, you haven't been in a situation where you have to sacrifice your own life interest for the benefit of others. Until you are there, you will not understand it. Somehow you get an inspiration and you become fearless because you are standing for the truth, you are standing for justice, you are finding, you're standing for almost everything that benefits other people other than yourself. That is why we, some, we have people like the Kwame Nkrumahs and we have people like the Mandelas. All right? Otherwise, you know, somebody has to do it. Somebody has to be in that position sometimes. So I'm very... What you tell the people of Ascend North for what they have done, the victory they have given well, it's, it's, you know, the, the victory belongs to them. The victory belongs to Ghana. And the victory belongs to rule of law, justice. Are you daunted by the fact that you'll be going to court very soon? No, 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 no. no. That's the least of my thought. I'm focused on how I can get that thing not developed. You know, the court can take its own course. I mean, there's, as I said earlier, I have not committed any, any wrong to worry about... Uh, what is ahead of in legal terms, no. All right, thank you very much, George Achikwesin. Thank you. Um, the, the one that has been declared as the winner of this by-election. Let me come back to Fifi Kwete. So um, does this election, uh, the, the results that we are seeing now, does it have a bearing on the 2024 elections? I, I would say it's a signal. It's a signal that the country is uh, ready to uh, do everything possible to stop a number of things that are going on. I mean, the, the destruction of the economy, the destruction of the moral fiber of the country, the perversion of our institutions, the weaponization of institutions to destroy truth and justice. I think a number of things are at stake, and the people of Ghana are signaling that enough is enough. Did you say sympathy vote, or um, it was just a referendum on the economy? I see it's a number of things, so many things together. The people clearly are tired. The people clearly have seen that their economy is destroyed. Their welfare is down. They can see the injustice that was happening. They can see the insults that was happening by last-minute attempt to buy their soul using what you call money and goods. So, so many things were together. So we see a signal, an awakening, and a message that is being sent to the rest of Ghana. And what should we be expecting from the NDC as you've chucked this victory? What should we be expecting from you? We, we are going to move into high gear. We are going to move into strategy. We are going to move to what you call uh, effective planning towards 2024. And of course, coming up with ideas that we need to be able to revive this economy and restore Ghana again. It appears that we are very swift in collating this particular result. Uh, under two hours, you were able to put together the results and then the jubilation started. I mean, is it a sign of some new development that we should... We, we have said it, that uh, uh, some of the mistakes made in the past will not be repeated. Uh, I personally have played to the country that we will clearly will see a coalition system that's different. That's the beginning of things that are happening. Thank you very much. So uh, that is the General Secretary of the uh, new uh, the National Democratic Congress, Fifi Fiavekwete. So now the official declaration of the results um, is being done by the Electoral Commission. Okay. So... Um, we are getting to, we are getting to, uh, so you can take it over from the studio whilst we uh, get uh, Dr. Sribo Kweku and the other EC officials to uh, give us the declaration of the results of this by-election. And, and indeed, we are waiting. As you can see, uh, Dr. Sribo Kweku is just about uh, declaring the official results. What you see on your screen is what we expect. Uh, him to announce a short while, uh, well, shortly uh, from yeah. us in North. Well, well, that's the, the figures that we've already brought you the uh, 57 uh, percent and 52 percent uh, for the 42 percent, 42 percent, 42.15 percent for uh, Charles Opoku and 57.56 percent uh, for James Atukwisi. It's what we expect to hear from the Electoral Commission. Uh, a director of electoral services when he formally announced. We're waiting to hear that. And then we'll begin to uh, 
put the results in some context. We've heard from Jesus Chukwesi. We've heard from the General Secretary of the Party, Ella Dekuka. There is one subject that we, we still need to talk about. The question is about whether this is a referendum. Exactly, we'll talk about that. But uh, let me just say that, you know, you had Fifi Kweti make the point that uh, they had said that things were going to change, and it's the beginning of a change that um, they had promised. So in the past, we had conversations about the NDC's coalition system, and we had said that um, they had always delayed. We had, we had said that, um, you know, the NDC in itself, uh, you know, in the build-up to the 20, uh, you know, the last year, um, national executive election, uh, the then chairman had been accused of not being able to collate election results. Uh, this is the NDC collating the election results quickly, beating the NPP that have been known to be doing a good job when it comes to the collation of results. So that's something they've done well about. Of course, we need to talk about whether or not this is a referendum. Now, I, I agree with those who would say that, um, you know, um, 17 months, 18 months of election is a long time. Mm. But look, um, if you are in a position and you win an election of this nature, it certainly would give you momentum going forward. And one of the things we have seen in by-elections is that one of the reasons why it's keenly contested all the time is that governments use, or political parties use by-elections as a means of testing their popularity. In the community okay. by-elections... We want to go back to the sure. uh, Asin North Collation Center where we understand the Electoral Commission is formally declaring the results. For candidate number one, is secured a percentage of... 42.15%. And list number two secures 0.29%. And list number three has 57.5%. By the power in the investor. Now, total turnout is 74%. 74.23%. Now, please, the candidate.
That is a formal declaration of James Datukwesing as a winner of the Asin North by elections. And remember that PM Express is always brought to you uh, by Cherry Tree Properties. Uh, we develop spaces as though we were going to occupy them ourselves. And you need to get a, them and call them. I'll tell you how to get in touch uh, with them uh, pretty soon. Also, Syntex Tanks, it is strong. It is tough, and as you know, it's been a pretty tough evening uh, for the MPP. But for Syntex Tanks, it really restants a lot. Also, Aluma Bites experienced greatness in every moment, and also by the Ghana Ace Commission. So we've been waiting for the declaration. It has happened now. Yes. Uh, 57% for James Atukwesi, 42% for uh, Charles Opoku. And you were making the point earlier. That, let's... Let's try and break this down. What does this mean, though, for the 2024 elections? Which is really a question that both the NDC and the MPP will try and answer beginning tomorrow. And so you, you, you realize that uh, when John Dramani Mahama was um, you know, campaigning in Asinov, he said this was a referendum on the government. Now, this was a uh, time for Ghanaians to send a message to the government and say you are not doing well. And you had heard the likes of Ben Efson make the point that um, what if the NDC loses? It could go a long way in hurting John Mahama because in the, for, for someone like Ben Efson, the MPP could capitalize on that and say he said it was a referendum on government and a party member, a governing party member wins. So it means we are doing well. In the same way, it's actually good news for the NDC. Now they have the momentum on their side because they said this is what they were going to do they wanted to win this election to actually prove people wrong. For some of us, we, we said it was going to be very difficult for the NDC to win. They're proving everybody wrong. They've won the election. And so they have the momentum on their side. Once you have the momentum on your side going into an election. Now, mind you, this is a party that prior to its national uh, executive election had indicated they were going to right the wrongs of the past. And you've seen this coming. In, uh, during the Kumewu by election, people had asked questions about where the NDC's coalition center was. They're proving everybody wrong. I mean, they got it very spot on by uh, 630, 645. They were, you know, churning out. In fact, the first time I heard them say they've won was uh, Opariado, who is the yeah. national youth organizer, talking to me around 545. Exactly. 545, let's say 550. Yeah, that's when I heard him say it first, and I was asking him, as I said it earlier today, are you not, are you certain this is not this is this not another um, comfortable league exactly. moment? And he says, no, I can tell you that we've won. And he was actually mentioning, as at the time, that they were going to win this by a landslide. This is not a landslide, but it was a significant victory. Well, you could call it that way because if you look at the percentage, then you can get into the percentage and say, if we have um, you know a fifteen percentage gap, that's huge. Fifteen percentage gap, that's huge. Particularly when, you know, the posters had said this was going to be a keenly close. contested race. It was going to be a close, close. one. And you were looking at um, the uh, MPP's candidate being in the lead. But, of course, I mean, the global analytics had indicated that you had about 6.97% uh, of the voters undecided. And so you could argue that that, that undecided margin did the trick. But, of course, if you're doing, uh, put that as a... Uh, error margin of uh, plus 1.5 to 1.2 to 2 percent, and you have this kind of margin. It tells you that even when it comes to the polls, people just didn't get it right, and that would lead to you know the point that going forward, the NDC would actually have the momentum. They have a campaign message. Okay, they said, and they started by saying, apart from framing you know uh, the prosecution of uh, James Quasing, and also of course a good candidate who came in and won. One of the things they also did very well in this election was actually to tell the people that look. No matter what they do, vote against them. No matter what they bring to you, vote against them. Now, since it's worked for them, you can expect them going forward to actually make the case that, look, whatever they do, look at your situation, look at the condition in which you find yourself. If Progressive protects more than just your home and car. You could save when you bundle your motorcycles, ATVs, boats, and RVs. Doesn't that sound good? Like the sound of your boat cruising along the intercoastal. And there's the sound of the prop hitting a really big rock. And now the sound of waves. Because the engine stopped. But you know what does sound good? You're covered with Progressive. So bundle all your vehicles in home in one place and save with the multi-policy discount. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. They've impoverished you over the period. Look at it 
and vote for us to come and change. Here's another thing that I, th- I think this elections also tell us. As you've been saying, in by-elections, voter turnout is always low, 50, 55 percent. It, it, it's been poor over the years. You have a situation in Assem North for the for it is rare to have a by-election with a voter turnout of 70 percent and above, which is quite significant. The Electoral Commission at the beginning of the day was telling us that they're looking at the queues, they're expecting a high voter turnout. That the voter turnout that would be a departure from what we've seen. That in itself would tell a story. People were galvanized to vote. And based on the numbers that we've seen, the fact that the MPP has lost more than 2,000 votes and the NDC has essentially maintained their votes from 2020, it showed that the NDC managed to galvanize their people to go to the polls. The MPP's supporters, at least 2,000 plus of them, either decided not to go and vote. I mean, really, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's one of the that's all, all, only reason you can pull in that they didn't vote. And they were not in the constituency or they're not galvanized to bother about going to vote. And that, for me, will be key going into 2024. And I've always said, in critical elections years like next year, the party that manages to galvanize their core base to turn out at the polling stations to vote wins the day. And, and, and we've always said both parties have this core group of people that they always rely on. In, in elections here, the, the, the turning point has been your ability to get that core group to vote. As for the floating voters, they will do what they have to do, but you need to bring your people to the game. Yeah. As we've seen in Asim North tonight, the NDC brought their people to the party. The MPP had a situation where their people didn't turn out to vote. And that will be key. And if anybody who is analyzing this for the MPP will be looking at how do we get our voters, how do we get our key supporters to turn out and vote? And that will be a big challenge for them going into 2024. Yes, I mean, I know we're wrapping up shortly, but that's the, the, the apathy that we talk about sometimes also going into an election. Affecting the incumbent in, in a fact, second I mean, term. I mean, affecting the incumbent in a second term. But that always stems from the doings of the incumbent. Okay. Now, people would... I mean, we do that also because of certain challenges or issues they may have. Uh, for most of the issues, it's not a case of being overly confident, as people may want to suggest. Yes, um, you can blame the NPP. They went into this election very confident. But I'm sure even there, I mean, today at the beginning of the election, they were uh, giving indication that it was, it was going to be keenly contested. I, I, I want to say this thing, but that now going forward, you have a parliament of 137, 137 plus the independent. And now going forward more than ever, James Jachi Kwasing has the legitimacy. He may be has facing, it. he has it, now that has explain. It. He may be facing criminal prosecution. But in the past, in the past, the issue was about whether he qualified to stand or not. Now that that has been taken away, now that he's gone back and won election, when many of us felt it was going to be very difficult for him, proves everybody wrong, and wins the election, he can now go back into the chamber. Yes, he would go to court again, but now he knows that he is the member of parliament elected by the people of Asinov. But then the question, and you mentioned it, is about because of what happened and the constitutional issues, he's facing a criminal prosecution also. Yeah. He is innocent until proven otherwise by the court. Yeah. But considering how expedited the process will be now, starting from Thursday when he has to go in on a daily basis, he ran the real risk of, that's just one of the outcomes possibly, of losing that particular case and becoming a convict. Now, here's the thing, though, as I say that. I spoke to um, the, the former minority chief whip recently, last week, in fact, that's uh, Muntak Bobara, who made a point that the argument... They've, they anticipate a situation where even if he loses the case, right, in the court, they will still insist that he holds on to the seat. And then he cites Dana Bonakwi as, as a president that they will appeal. And whilst they've appealed, they would insist that until that case is determined, he holds on to his seat. And it will drag this out as long as, as possible. And, and lawyers disagree on, on, on that outcome. But that is their strategy going forward. But that is going to be an issue. We see how that plays out. I think you heard um, Adeko come make the point that somebody should, uh, somebody should um, speak to the Attorney General to stop the prosecution. 
because of the legitimacy question that you've just talked about, now that people have reaffirmed their faith in him, will, will that play out? I'm, I, I, I don't know, but the next few days will tell us a lot. I mean, Evans, one of the things the NDC has done very well when it comes to this particular campaign, I mean, uh, now that the campaign is over, I mean, they run a very, I mean, they run a good campaign, and that's the reason they've won. You know, um, it's framing this whole prosecution case nicely. But you see, yes, we know that uh, when it comes to the organs of our democracy, it's important that we protect all of them, particularly mm -hmm. the, the judiciary. But you've seen the NDC say that the government is actually not prosecuting, but persecuting their members using the judiciary. Now, at this point in time, you would, if you're the NPP, you're looking at what Kandapa said some time ago, that if everything goes in their favor, people may begin to ask questions. He's not a lawyer. He's a national security minister. I say, at this point in time, I think the attorney general could decide whether to pursue the case or not to pursue the case. Politically, I think it's important he lets it go. Well, I mean, that is... I guess the next big question, um, whether they will file in on the prosecutor to, to stop it or what will happen, because the court has decided this is going to be heard on a daily basis, and we'll see how that plays out in court. But he has a significant win in the sale now because yeah. of the people voting for him, and he's repeating his numbers from 2020, yeah. right? It is the people in the same north, I mean, against him. But again, if you look at it, well, on the strict sense of the law, let the court. But again, doesn't he need this case? And, and that's the other side of it. Go through, if he really believes he's innocent, to go through and clear his name, right? And, and that's, that's, that's the flip side of it. And, and, of course, people may like, like to argue around this. But the next few days will tell us a lot. Tonight, he's won, right? And he's made the point that he was always relaxed, right? And always felt, you know, he was going to win. But tonight was an exception because, as he believed, tonight is a reaffirmation of a victory that he won. Because you know, he maintained his, his number of votes th this time around. is a reaffirmation of this. Let's spare a thought now for the MPP. What does this mean for the MPP? We talked a lot about what this means for the NDC. What does this mean for the NDC going into next year? Well, I mean, How the, much should they put on this outcome? I mean, it, it, should, it should tell the NPP something. I mean, it should tell them that, look, um, people are beginning to feel the pinch. And it doesn't matter what you do to cushion them temporarily. What has been the reality over the period is what would eventually, I mean, um, should be a thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you may have gone to your traditional stronghold in Kumeru and won an election and made it to believe, I mean, made you to believe that you could do that uh, in every, uh, you know, constituency. But this is what people have termed as a swing constituency. And the people are telling you, no, we still like our member of parliament. If they agree, and we've agreed that, uh, I mean, I have my own doubts about, uh, you know, uh, by-elections being referendums. We can have that uh, intellectual debate another time. But let's do the political one and say this is actually uh, a referendum on the government. If we take it that it's a referendum on the government, then it means the NPP must put its house in order. Otherwise, come 2024, again, Everything, and let's be, uh, you know, uh, I mean, let, let's make this point here. The trend analysis points to an NDC's election to lose because it's been eight years, eight years, eight years. But I actually said, going into Ascent North, that Ascent North was NDC's to lose as well. Yes. And, and, and they won it. They won it. So I'm saying, going into election 2024 is the NDC's to lose. And that's why the MPP said they want to break 